Hello and welcome to Iron KZN. My name is Spumele Lezondi. Now the Durban July is an annual horse racing event that's lasted over 100 years now. But it's no longer just about the horses here, as many come to the Durban July to see fashion and listen to live music. This year's theme is Posh. Oh my gosh! We're going to find out more about that later on. First, here's what's coming up on the show. Durban is on its way to becoming a true aerotropolis as it receives well-needed investment in the Dube trade port. Fashion by the Sea finally takes place. And the Durban International Film Festival goes ahead as planned despite the banning of the opening film. We have 72 features from around the world, 45 documentaries, a generous selection of shorts. Um, and they really, they really are some really amazing films. With increased investment and an influx of tourists to KwaZulu Natal, a new route has been opened between Durban and Harare in Zimbabwe. Nadira Beer took this flight and filed this report for us. How do you get from Durban to Harare in just two hours? Sounds simple, yet the journey to creating this much needed air link has been a complicated one. This route is a culmination of a lot of work that has been done behind the scenes, but also that follows a very clearly well-crafted strategy. We said in 2009 and 2010 that as well as Natal, we are going to employ an aggressive strategy that would take us to the many capitals of the of the countries in the region, but that will also see us employing a strategy of developing a route that will come towards Natal to Durban and Kinshara International Airport in particular. It translates the ideals of uh, liberation of Africa uh, and liberation of our region. Uh, the, the launch of, of this link between uh, KwaZulu Natal and Zimbabwe and we as a players of civil aviation, we totally agree and we encourage the open sky policies because that is tradition, African tradition, when anyone was welcomed in their village, they used to use this, uh, this, uh, this uh, phrase, uh, extended to openness, welcoming, and we welcome, we Zimbabweans uh, and particularly Civil Aviation Authority of Zimbabwe. We welcome this kind of uh, initiatives. We encourage, we congratulate South African Express Airlines for uh, having courage and uh, putting so much effort. Since the first flight in November 2012, SA Express has flown thousands of passengers between Durban and Harare International Airports. The numbers have shown an increase over the months, a positive sign for the value of the route, not just to those who were involved in bringing it to fruition, but also to investors wanting to do business between the two countries. Since we, our route proving, which is the period prior to the launch, we've seen the route grow to be carrying an average of about 70% load factor which is a very good load factor for us because as South African Express, once we hit about 75% load factor, that is occupancy, we add another frequency or we grow the capacity by increasing the size of aircraft. So this is a very interesting route for us and uh, we are already looking to grow it. Zimbabwe's tumultuous history of political and social upheaval has left potential investors and visitors uneasy. The continued democratic flaws have proved to be the country's deterrent to the vital attention needed to turn the country around. Even for the media contingent participating in this event, customs at Harare International Airport proved unnecessarily difficult. After about two hours of waiting, the contingent was finally granted access, but under the condition that we do not record anything or interview anyone outside the venue where the event was being held. Perhaps just a chink in the chain, but one may speculate the association with Zimbabwe's upcoming elections at the end of July. We wanted media to understand that there is no uh, difficulties in Zimbabwe as such that this open sky policy which we have 
We are a very peaceful country and people. We welcome equally everyone in our country. We are pro-development of uh, stability, economic stability. Uh, but more than that, what we want to let you know, there is a great future for the future of Zimbabwe. You know the mineral resources discovered recently, plus minerals and gold and uh, diamonds which exist in Zimbabwe, will be launching platform. And uh, we felt in our strategy that now is the time to establish, whoever wants to establish. And uh, therefore, we, we opted for open sky policy. Zimbabwe played a significant role in South Africa's fight for democracy during the apartheid regime. Mabuya Kulu says that it is therefore important that South Africa assist Zimbabwe in rebuilding the country. The inauguration of this flight is part of our Africa expansion strategy, both at South African Express as well as South African Airways. We want to be able to take South Africans to every single country in Africa. We want to increase our cargo transportation using our airlines. We want to increase the transportation of South Africans, the passengers, to every African country and to be able to move Africans within the African continent for, the, for, for, for economic development and growth, for, for, uh, which will increase skills development, which will increase job creation, and most particularly to increase regional integration in, 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 in our continent. The KwaZulu-Natal Department of Trade and Economic Development has bonded with a number of African countries besides Zimbabwe, such as Botswana, Angola, DRC and Mozambique. The aim is to build a mutually beneficial relationship for neighbours South Africa and Zimbabwe. The tourism and particularly the trade avenue between the regions are set to gain enormously. Within a period of two years, in 2011, the trade volumes between Zimbabwe and the volumes that were coming from West Natal were standing at about 2.2 billion. In 2012, we saw a phenomenal growth of 19.3% where we push up those trade volumes to move to 2.6 billion. That clearly tells us that if you look where Zimbabwe is sourcing, the bulk of what is being sourced by Zimbabweans come from West Natal, South Africa. Few direct jobs have been created by the launch of this route. However, the number of indirect jobs cannot be underestimated. The facilitation of links such as these undoubtedly contributes to economic empowerment. The King Shaga International Airport is an important component in ensuring that goods and tourists move easily in and out of KwaZulu-Natal. The airport is in Durban's Dube Trade Port, which recently received a big investment. Sri Property Holdings has become the first private investor in the Dube Trade Port as the company has put in hundreds of millions of rand into building warehouses in the area. The announcement of the investment took place in a breakfast held in the trade port, which is also home to King Shaga International Airport. What is happening here, we are seeing a, a, an investment by the Sri Property Holdings, who are going to be investing an amount in excess of 164.7 million. That amount of money that will be invested here we will actually be capitalizing in the warehouse and creating space um, for their clientele. We include blue chip companies that are actually going to become of their clients. And for us, it actually gives us a footprint in actually saying that the DTP and an East environment is now growing in leaps and bounds and attracting investment. And it is adding another investment. And the total investment that we have now seen here in DTP with process investment is in the region of 560 million. We've got 47 sites currently here in the trade zone. Um, we've currently got 45 um, completed, or uh, the uh, agreements completed, with another two on reservations. So we're confident already the investment is coming. Not only are we, are we confident of increased investment, but of the current one we, we, we're receiving currently. Sri Property Management say they are excited about being the first as they realize the growth potential of the Dubai trade port. We're building a, a, a warehouse that's 21,000 square meters uh, as our first uh, phase. Uh, and while we started that development, we had the Imperial Group come in and take up that space. 
So we have uh, across the road, uh, as you see, uh, 84,000 square meters of warehouse for logistic facilities. And it will be the new design where you'll have less columns, more height, so you can get more cubic uh, pallet positions in the same ground space. The KwaZulu-Natal government is on a mission to develop Durban into an airport city, or what they are calling an aerotropolis. They say this will contribute immensely to the growth of the economy of the province. The province's Tourism and Economic Development MEC, Mike Mabuyakulu, feels Dube Trade Port will be at the center of this growth and development. This particular aerotropolis, uh, Kaiseran, uh, city of Eritropos Kaiseran, which is around the DTP, is so important because port cities in the world have become the way of growing new cities, of doing business, because it is based on three concepts, that is speed, agility and time. And therefore, if anyone can actually respond to those and being closer to the airport actually gives you that. And so from that point of view, it is important, but secondly, it is now an open public secret that the, the Dubai trade port and all of this area is now destined to become the special economic zone. And that in itself therefore means we are going to see growth of a new city within a city. Azulu Natal government says it still needs more businesses to come on board and invest in the province's vision.